took my love and I took it down. I climbed a mountain and turned it around, and I saw my reflection in a snow-covered hills. Well, the landslide brought me down. Oh. So I hope you enjoyed that. As per usual, thank you ever so much to Austrian Audio for allowing us to give away one of these mics so you can enter to win. I've actually got the mic up here, so I'm speaking into it. Once I called official live. Yes. One, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive. I enjoy the sound of this mic. It, it's very mid-range forward for me. You hear that like, ah, one, two, two, two. And we're going to listen to the tracks now. I'm going to go through everything. When I mean mid, I mean like mid-mid. Like sort of 700 to about 1.5. It's quite forward. I didn't look at the spec sheet, so I have no idea how it you know, looks. But I know how it sounds. And I'm just going to go into this track and tell you what I loved about it. This is one of the few tracks where we've done almost no mixing. Like, for instance, here's the acoustic guitar. There's nothing on this. There is no compression. There is no EQ. On the mix, this is just the sound of the OC16 on the acoustic. I was very impressed what it did to the acoustic because the acoustic has a ton of like high mids and high end and boominess to it. But this kind of mid-range forward thing that it's got is really, really nice. I really feel like it complements acoustic guitars really well. Going to sections where it gets louder. That's nothing. That's no high passing, that's no EQ, that's no compression, that's exactly as it was recorded. And I left it like that for the mix, specifically so we could talk about it. 
So the Zero 16 has three settings. It has a zero, a 40, and a 160 high pass or roll off, depending on what you want to call it. So I'm actually going to set this just on 40. I think everything we're going to record except for drums will probably be good on 40. So we'll get rid of any low rumble, any AC noise or whatever. Um, as is typical, I will face this on, I'm going to put it between the 12th and 14th fret. So, sorry, Katie, I don't want to bang the microphone into you. That's Eric's job. <laughs> Inside joke. All right, so we're going to have to go between the 12th and 14th fret. I'm going to angle it slightly away from the sound hole just so we don't pick up all that boom, but we do have the 40 roll off. It's got a 160 on it. I mean, if this was an acoustic guitar inside of a really dense track, then I'd probably do 160, but it's not because we, this is a beautiful open song. So we're gonna keep the acoustic sounding pretty natural. Now, the other place I think it really, really excelled was on guitar amps. Again, I think that because it's got kind of a mid-range forwardness to it, like pure mids, the amp that we had it on, the Fender Tone Master. This might be my favorite mic I've used on that amp. Have a listen to this. Again, no EQ, no compression. This is the sound of the amp being reproduced by the OC16. I'll put it in the other side. And uh, the other side is the same combination of pedals. It's my Carl Martin Echo Tone, but it's also got the Volts flanger on it. I love the sound of this Volts flanger. Now, when I worked a lot with Dave Sardi, he would do, he'd put U67s on guitar amps, where most people would put 57s, he'd use a Neumann U67. And a U67 is a really, really good mic for guitar amps. So I do experiment with large diaphragm condensers, but they don't always work because sometimes they've got really great top end and they just give me excessive air and, well, not even air, because that sounds so polite, doesn't it? But just excessive high end that I don't want, fizziness. This, because it just is pushing a little bit in those mids, really, really complements the guitar. So here's the acoustic guitar and electric guitars. Again, no EQ, no compression, two tape, none in the mix. Now, I never read any blurb. <laughs> I never. I never look at spec sheets because I don't care what somebody says in the spec. I want to hear for myself. If I go now to this last section, I've got all the same guitars, but I added a baritone as well. So let's listen to the acoustic guitar, the two electrics, and a baritone down the middle. They're all separated. They're all living in their own place. I didn't do any additional work. I got the sound out of the amp that I wanted acoustic supernatural sounding not boomy this mic is $399 $399 microphones usually have horrible cheap sounding high end don't they we all know that there are of course a handful of great companies that make exceptional mics in that price range. We're here to talk about the Austrian. I feel like this is really a mic that I'm going to love for guitars. I really do. Okay, so let's go to Katie's voice. Now, with Katie's voice, I did really enjoy it. It doesn't have any wispiness on top. I did two things to it. I did put some compression on it, and I added Soothe. Now, Soothe, I used a little bit. You see, I went here... I'm sort of boosted about 600-ish because there was a little bit with the main range forwardness and her voice already having a little bit of this in it, that kind of mid, it just felt a little, little exaggerated. So have a listen to it with and without this on. This is without it. Well, I've been afraid of changing because I built my life around you. It's still 
pretty darn smooth, just with gentle compression. Now let's put Soothe on it, Soothe 2. Well, I've been afraid of changing because I built my life around you. So it just ducks a little bit of that, a uh, little bit of that honkiness. But honestly, probably just using a bit of volume automation would do the trick. You know, that's the thing. You've got a mid-range forward, like pure mid-range forward mic. Um, great for certain instruments. This is just not what I was expecting from a $400 microphone. I was expecting it to sound great, but I was also expecting it to be a little wispy at the top end. That's usually what happens with cheaper capsules, especially a microphone that's made in Austria. It's not being made by a cheap workforce. So there was a part of me, honestly, it was thinking, you know, made in Austria, you know, people are getting paid more. It's probably going to sound more. It's a $400 microphone. It's probably going to sound more like a $250 microphone. That was my perception and probably a lot of you, but it doesn't. It sounds like a more expensive microphone. It really does. So I'm going to go to the bass amp. I'm going to turn all the EQ and compression off. Not this much. Go to the out. Again, it's got a real forwardness on that pum pum. It's getting, it, I hear the fingers plucking the strings. No EQ, no compression. That's how it's recorded. And I'm a fairly even bass player, but I'm no, uh, I'm no Jaco Pistorius. I'm just the guy that plays bass, who really plays guitar. When all is said and done, this might be, this might be a really amazing instrument condenser that is only 400 bucks. All right, here's the drums. I'm going to take off all the EQ. I, all I did was put some EQ and a bit of reverb on it. Here is completely flat. So this is the OC16 and it's the usual position we do it where I'm facing down towards the kick and the snare area. And we decided to add as well, you can take it or leave it, you can use it in the mix, the OC18, so the Austrian Audio OC18, which is more of a view of the kit with predominantly on, of course, the kick drum. So this will work on its own, just compress it a little harder, put some 60 hertz on it to bring out the low end of the kick, and you will get a great mono drum sound. If you do this one in front and blend it in, of course it's going to give you predominantly the kick and you can get a great balance. But you can just use the one mic, that's my favorite mono mic position because it picks up the back end of the kick drum here and gives you a lot of body. It's, this is two mics, it's pretty remarkably good. Put my EQ on, so I did a Poltec boost at 60 hertz and a little bit of low mid cut, uh, about 350 on the kick. And then I put some reverb on the OC16 and nothing else, a bit of compression, but no EQ. So this is really just boosting of low end and a bit of a 350 cut. And now this is the drum sound. That same mid range punch. Throw the bass in. Now all the guitars. Three points for anybody who recognizes what motif I added to that section there. What other song did I introduce into this? Just because I like to be mischievous. Everything in. Changing cause I build my around you. Let's just calculate something here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven plugins. There's eleven plugins on this whole mix. Twenty-one sources because I printed all the reverbs and stuff. So there's twenty-one channels. And uh, there's DIs there, which you can reamp and stuff like that, but only 11 plugins on the whole mix.
it's a wonderful sounding mic. You know, there's a lot of great microphones out there. You know the ones I've tried? You know what I like them for? Specifically, I mean, it sounds great on Katie's voice. It would be really, really good on somebody that's maybe got a big, deep voice but doesn't really have anything forward or somebody that's really thin up here and needs some, some, some mid added back to it. But as a utility mic, that's also could be your best condenser guitar mic. Pretty, pretty tasty mic to have in your arsenal. Download the multi-tracks. Don't forget to enter to win. Thank you, everybody that watched. Do your own mixes. If you're Academy members, of course, put this up inside the Academy and we will mix critique it. If you haven't already, please join the Academy. There'll be a link down below. You can go to producelikeapro.com and you can also sign up for the email list, get a whole bunch of free goodies. Thanks everybody who watched. Um, don't forget, you can download these multi-tracks, enter to win the microphone. So long, farewell, la vida, say au revoir, adios, ciao, goodbye, sayonara, reach later, bye.